Praise the Lord, everybody. It's worship time in the sanctuary. Come on, can you clap your hands and come on, can you stand on your feet? It's time for worship. This is the day that the, come on, children, let's stand. We come to invite the children to stand up. That's right. We come to reverence the presence of the king this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, let's make some noise. The Lord is worthy of the Lord. Rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let's lift that up all over the building. Let the glory of let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord. Rise among us, let the praises of our feet rise among us, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. We want your glory, Lord. We want your glory, Lord. We 
want your glory, Lord. We want your glory, Lord. Sing down your glory, Lord. Sing down your glory, Lord. Oh, sing down your glory, Lord. Sing down your glory, Lord. Sing down your glory, Lord. Let it run, let it run. 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 Let it, let it run, let it run. Oh, let it run, let it run. We want your glory, Lord. Let it run. Let it run. Send your power. Send your anointing. Let it run. Somebody needs a healing. Let it run. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Oh, we need the glory of the Lord. Somebody needs the glory of the Lord to rise within them. We've been through some ups and downs this week. We've been through some ins and outs. We've had some joys. We've had some disappointments. We've shed some tears. We've shouted hallelujah. I need the glory this morning. I need it to come and rise up. Rise in this place, God. Oh, God, we call on you this morning, God. We're dealing with some circumstances. We're dealing with some situations in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in on our jobs, in our relationships. And we need the glory of the Lord to come in. of the Lord to cover us, cover our schools, cover our children, cover our grandchildren, cover our communities, cover our hedges and byways, our street corners and in high places, God. Oh, hallelujah this morning. Let the glory of the Lord rise. excited on this day to welcome you here. Oh yes, the glory of the Lord rise in this place. I'm so happy to see these great smiling faces this morning. Our young people are on deck. Amen. They ready to, uh, oh, they smiling and they ready to uh, minister to us this morning. Amen. Come on y'all, just clap for them right now for their faithfulness. Amen. Amen. They even let Pastor have a part in one of their songs. Well, I sort of took the part. Amen. <laughs> See, they don't even remember. <laughs> Come on. But y'all going to remember tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. Hallelujah. They don't forget that I got a part. I, I That's all right. I got the part. The best part, y'all. Yeah, I got the best part. <laughs> Amen. Yes, but we're so proud of our young people as we continue to train them up in the way that they should go. For when they're old, they will not depart from it. It doesn't say that they will not wander. Understand what the word says. Rightly divide the word. It does not say that they won't get distracted. But deep down in their souls, it will come to their remembrance that I am more than a conqueror. 
mm, that I have power, that I am, I am uh, a royal priesthood. They will remember what God can do for them because we taught them. Mm -hmm. We exampled it for them. We praise God for today. Amen. And some of them are getting ready to head off into summer vacations and, and times away. And we're praying God to cover them in this season. We're in the season of celebrations, graduations, promotions, and, and all those other things that are taking place in, in, in the lives of our young people and even our not so young. And we praise God for that. We welcome you today to this worship experience. And we pray that you will be blessed, that something will prick your heart, that will encourage you, challenge you, and even convict you so that you will be what God has called you to be. Amen. Amen. At this time, the Reverend uh, DeMarcus prayer is going to come and lead us in prayer and our scripture reading. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence one more time. Somebody laid down last night. They didn't make it, God. But we thank you for touching us with the finger of your love, giving us another opportunity to get it right. We thank you for looking beyond our faults, God, and continuing to seek our needs. They may not be what we want. You know what we need, God, and we thank you even right now, God. Sometimes it's hard for us to see and to understand, but you created us. You're the and the maker of everything. The Bible tells us that the earth is the fullness thereof, the world they that dwell. So you know what's best for us, God. And so we thank you, God. You right now, we invoke your Holy Spirit. We ask that you would allow your Holy Spirit to fall fresh on us even right now, oh God. So that our minds can be renewed, our hearts can be restored, relationships put back together, God, like only you can. For you are a heart fixer, and the mind regulate. I used to hear my great grandfather say that years ago, but now I understand, God, that those that are dealing with things right now, that to be in the house of the Lord on this morning, God, to open our hearts, our minds, our ears as we receive this word through the song that our young scholars are about to sing, and also through the priest pastor is about to deliver, God. Allow this worship experience to be greater than it's ever been before. As every round goes higher and higher in you, God. You will get the glory. The devil will be horrified. These words we ask in your mighty darling son Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. come from Acts first chapter. We'll be looking at verses 6 through 14. And I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when we will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards the heaven, 
suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealite, and Judas, son of James, all these were constantly devoting themselves in prayer together. With certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Amen, amen. This these young people, y'all ready? Amen. All right, they're going to come and bless us. You doing veils first? Yeah, they're going to sing that. Our next song is Come Thou Found of Every Blessing.
Come on, let's give our future a hand clap. So we want to give God praise because we're going to sing, Oh Lord, how excellent. And it's funny because as Pastor E told us yesterday, many adult choirs can't do this song. But we thank God that the children have pressed forth and persevered. And you all should know it. Y'all come on and help us sing, Oh Lord, how excellent.
This is a youth turn, so I need everybody to get prompt for God. Praise the Lord. Yes, this is it. <laughs> you got to be in the knowing and in the... Because listen, if we don't stand... Anybody got the favor of God? Come on, put your hands together. Bye. 
what? we go now listen 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 we can't sing it and y'all not sing it so you got to point to them over there on the right side they, oh, uh, so ask them what's that that i see say what that that, that it's i see it's the mirror all over me what's that that i see what's that that i see it is. God keeps adding to the numbers because see it's not about membership any young person that wants to sing for the Lord and serve the Lord he says suffer not the little children you know when they were trying to block them from coming to Jesus you know because they didn't belong they they weren't a uh, member of Mount Zion they they weren't coming from the right side of town or they didn't have this or that and they were trying to stop them from coming to Jesus. And Jesus says, he says, suffer not the little children. He said, because unless you become like these, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And why did he say that? Why did he say you had to become like them? Because see, they're at, they're at that age where they have an innocence. They haven't learned to judge and have dislikes just based on whatever. They are innocent. And so God said, unless your heart can be really talking about your heart can become like these little children, you will not enter kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. We praise God for the little children. Amen. Amen. And we moved up there Sunday. So I know some of y'all was like, oh, I didn't know the children were singing this Sunday. Well, we're glad you didn't know. Uh, but some of them are heading out of town as soon as school is over. And we wanted them to have that opportunity uh, to share uh, before they depart to spend time with grandparents and other states and uh, travel and do other things. And so we praise God for the opportunity. Amen. Amen. Let me get back to where I'm supposed to be. Hallelujah. And so we come today with just a few quick announcements. I'm not going to hold you long. I, I have a... Uh, not a preaching, but a speaking engagement this afternoon in Conyers. So I got to get there by 2.30. Amen. Amen. I don't want to get no ticket. Hallelujah. Only ticket I want to get is to the is when Jesus says, get on board. Amen. I don't want to get no other ticket. 
Hallelujah. So do know that we have resumed our Wednesday night Bible studies. Um, and we had an awesome Bible study sharing opportunity this past Wednesday as we began to talk about Samson. I know many people, when they think of Samson, the first thought they run to is delight. But there's a whole lot more about Samson. And we have some of sharing as we wind down the study of the book of Judges. And so we will finish that up on this Wednesday. I also want to remind you that we are finishing the series. We will have our sixth district planning meeting uh, beginning uh, the end of May in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, if you're available to go, we pray that you will encourage you to go so that you will hear and see what's going on in the life of the Zion. And then I just want you to put on your calendar, uh, Educational Achievement Sunday will be the second, um, June the 11th, uh, where we will acknowledge young people, their promotional achievements, graduations, uh, all of those things we will highlight on that Sunday. A link to sign up and share the information with the person. Uh, we're still uh, continuing our food ministry. We've added a component to it. It is a special uh, program that is available for seniors. Uh, they have to be in the Clayton County area, but seniors can get a free monthly food box that is designated just for them. You know, 60 is not really senior citizen age, but you can be 60. And as we know, groceries are very high. Uh, so please sign up. Please share it with someone uh, and just let them know that they can come uh, on the first and third Saturday. Thursday and pick up their box. We have 60 boxes every month and I didn't know it was going to be so difficult to give away something free. Amen. We still have boxes and we cannot carry them over. Amen. That's, that's a violation of the program. You're supposed to get rid of all your boxes in the month. Boxes to get rid of for June. So I know y'all know some but you got to tell them. You got to share it and let them know. Amen. Put it, put the poster up. If you got a workplace bulletin board, bulletin board, just post it and share it so we can continue to do ministry that blesses the community. Our our camp is on the way. They will be starting the Tuesday after Memorial Day. We are already getting record registrations. Uh, for camp. So if you are looking for a safe place, an economical place for your children or grandchildren, or maybe you have some grand or family members that are coming to spend the summer with you and you just know you don't want them at the house every day, uh, sign them up. You can do it by the week. Uh, we're here. Uh, the camp will be running from uh, and we have a lot of activities planned for them. So please share the information and uh, let us uh, be able to be a service to someone in the community. Our yard sale, the first Saturday in June, I know y'all been cleaning and, and getting ready. Your spring cleaning should be almost over. I know you got some stuff in your garage. Some of y'all can't even park in your garage. I ain't some of you got stuff sitting around and you don't even know what it is anymore. It's been sitting there so long that you just walk by it. You automatically skirt around it because it just doesn't become like a piece of furniture in your house. Get that stuff out of there. Even make you some money. If you don't want to set up a table and sell it on June the 3rd, then we will do it for you. Uh, but you will be getting the link this week to sign up for the table. Please share it with other people because uh, I know there are people that are always looking uh, for yard sales to be able to even get rid of their stuff and maybe they're in an area where there's not high visibility or they're in an apartment complex or a condominium and so they're not able to do the traditional yard sale they can come here and uh, and rent a table uh, and then sell their uh, their items or you can just donate them and we will sell them 
on behalf of the church. So just please, please, please share the information. Amen. Amen. And I think that is about it. Amen. Amen. Except to remind everybody to just give into the ministry. We can't do anything that we do. This is, this is your ministry. And so if you are so inclined uh, at the close of service, you will have an opportunity to sow your seeds into this ministry. And we thank you for allowing us the opportunity to do what God has called us to do in this space. Amen. 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 Uh, when we conclude our prayer time, I am going to ask Reverend Prayer if he would take the young people down. This will be uh, maybe the last Sunday for a little while that they will all be here uh, to be able to gather together and share a word to encourage them as they finish out their school year. But I believe, you know, the word says we ought to pray without ceasing. There's always prayer needed. I was sharing this morning and yesterday in the in our lives that stand in the need of prayer that looks like the storms just keep raging. I ask you to lift up Sister Stokes as her brother who has fellowship with us here and not only just came in worship, but he came and worked in our food ministry when he would be in town. And uh, he has suffered a stroke. And so we ask that you lift him up and lift Sister Stokes up as she goes through this season of seeming unending trying trials and tribulations that God will continue to strengthen her. We ask you to pray for Sister uh, Diane uh, Grant Wings. Grant, did I get it backwards? I might have had a dyslexic moment. Uh, as she continues to face the challenges of how she can be a caregiver for her mother, even as she has to care for herself. So pray for her strength and perseverance as she presses through. I also ask you to lift up Sister Kalia prayer lost her uncle almost a week ago in Florida that you would pray for her and her family as she goes through this time of bereavement I know what it's like to have a favorite uncle that is more like a father figure to you than an uncle than an uncle so please pray for her. I want you to pray for Elder Sean as he prepares on next week to lay his godmother to rest. She fellowshiped here with us and came to our jazz on the, uh, our worship on the lot back in the fall. And just shows you that God has no respect of person, no respect of time. But it's God's time that he's working in. We may feel like he shows up when it's inconvenient for us. When we hadn't planned. When we hadn't thought about it. But God has a way of doing what God does. And we just have to pray for wisdom and understanding. That God will continue to cover us as we go out and come in. So if everything's going well at your house, you're not having any trials and tribulations, no sickness, no grief. He used to say, if you're not in a storm, you either just came out of one, ready to go into one. It's just like the earth rotates every day. Life is constant. It does not stay still. So we don't even know what this afternoon will bring. We've made plans. <laughs> we 
we've already counted it but God has the ultimate word so this morning I encourage you to pray for somebody even if you feel you don't need it for yourself intercede on someone's behalf if you want to come to the altar the altar is open you're welcome to stand where you are if you prefer but don't let this moment pass you by and the strength of my life he moves on he is a real strike he promised to keep me never to leave me he's never ever come short of his word i've got to fast stay in the narrow way my life green every day i want to go with him when he comes i've come too far and i'll never turn back oh, yeah. oh.
Thank you. We thank you for being here. Yes, Lord, whatever you need. My God. The sister. Sister Angela comes to the altar seeking special prayer. Yes, Lord. These are her grandchildren she has with her. And she's seeking custody for them needs us to intercede on her behalf that God will move on her request that she will be able to keep them safe from hurt, harm, and danger so right now Heavenly Father we just come asking you to break the yoke <laughs> that may be preventing her desires to come forth God to move on the hearts of the decision makers. God, that they will grant her petition. God, we know that you know her heart, God. We, you know her desire. You know her love for her grandchildren, God. That she will cover and protect. So now, God, stand with her in this hour. Stand with her when she feels weak, God. She doesn't have any choice. Stand with her when she feels like the odds are stacked against her. Stand with her, God, when it seems like the answer will be no. <laughs> and let her know that you have the power. To, you have the power to just in one word make the yes become the no become yes. You have the power to make the improbable possible. And so right now, God, we come surrounding her, God. We come interceding on her behalf, God. We come not having to ask why, God, but just do it, God, according to your will. God, she's come and she stood and, and she's cried out, God. Now hear her cry, God. Oh, God, let her, let these children cling to her and never leave her, God. God, grant her her petition. Enable her to be a godly example in their lives, God. Enable them to understand the love that she has for them. And understand, God, that they are still your chosen children. That they are still a royal. That they still have worth in this world, God. Her instill in them your godly admonition, God. Enable her to walk as a godly example before them, God. God, when she the places and spaces that will have to sit and make judgment calls on her God remind them that she is a let them see your anointing on her God let them see the spirit already moving God let them realize that you have said touch not my anointed <laughs> let them see that you are already interceding let them be in wonder and amazement gonna say no but for some reason I'm being convicted to say yes I don't understand why I don't think she meets the qualifications huh? but God has already qualified her so now God she's come boldly God she's come transparent God she's come not hiding her need God she said I need to touch the hem of his God that my grandchildren can be made whole. That my family can be made whole. So that my life can be made whole. So that my household can be made whole. So that we can be healed from the inside out. And now we in the name of Jesus. 
It's done, God. Victory is already won. You've already moved, God. So let her walk in your authority. Let her walk with power and understand that you've already prepared a table before her. The presence of her enemies. That you've already anointed her head with oil. And that her cup shall endure it, run over. Things that she has asked for. Those things she has prayed for. Those things that she has lamented for shall come forth. That shall come forth. Hallelujah. 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 Do it right now, God. Do it right now, God. Remove all doubt from her, God. Remove all anxiety, God. Remove all worry, God. Remove all fear, God. And let her just know that it's done, God. That you're working it on her behalf that you're already opening doors that no one else can close, that you're making a way out of no way, <laughs> that you're already straightening out the crooked places and up the low valleys. Thank you, Jesus, for the answered prayer. We're claiming it right now in the name of Jesus. And all the people in agreement said amen, amen, amen. Jace Durden and Rylan. Okay, they're going to be attending our camp. Amen. See what God does, how ministry works. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm going to stay right in the vein. We are trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. So much trouble. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. But that's all right.
Don't worry about it. Don't let your mind drop. God's gonna fix it. Ah, oh, fix it. Jesus, Jesus, season. Yes, it's more than one day. There were some things that happened after Easter and one of them took place on Thursday, I believe it was. It was what we call Ascension Day. That is when Jesus ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of his Father. And so on this Sunday, the text that was read today talks about that <clears throat> moment when Jesus was taken up into heaven. And it's a powerful moment. Leading into next Sunday will be Pentecost Sunday. So I ask you if you when the fire of the Holy Ghost. So if you want to wear your red next week, you can wear your red. But we will be celebrating Pentecost. Our young people are heading downstairs. Amen. For Children's Church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. They so happy. Amen. And I want to thank those who go and help them and help Reverend Prayer. Is, uh, usually Sister Manley's with them and she's out today and ask that you keep her in your prayers also. But on today, she has the opportunity to celebrate the graduation of her daughter, Tyler, from Spelman College. Amen. Amen. So we praise God for that achievement. Hallelujah. So I'm going to draw your attention this morning to the text that was read earlier, but I want to go down to uh, verse starting at verse 8, and I think we're going to go through 11. That reads thusly, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he has said this, as they were watching, staring, gazing, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up, Toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, 
who has been taken up from you into heaven will come again in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy Father, we come right now to just say thank you. God, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to share in your word, God. We ask now, God, that you uh, remove me, God, and allow your full power forward so that the people will receive not my words, but your words, God. Because I pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, for you are indeed my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said, amen. And for a moment today, I want to talk about how this text tells us about the power of our witness. But I'd rather use a different subject. You can put down the power of your witness, but I want to know what are you waiting for? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Why do you stand there looking up in the sky? You know, Jesus gave his church the power needed to share the good news. And one of the things that has amazed me and even perplexed me is how excited we get when we start talking about heaven. You know, I remember my grandmother when she would tell us to do something. And then we'd be standing there and hadn't moved and just be looking at her. And she used to say, what are you looking for? What you looking at? What are you looking for? See, we get so excited <clears throat> uh, uh, about talking about heaven. We get more excited about songs and psalms that talk about going to heaven than we do about anything else. Going up yonder to be with my Lord. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. Dare to sing forever of his saving grace. Some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away, caught up to meet him. Joy and happiness will be mine. You know, it would seem that our philosophy is that the Lord created us and saved us just to get us to heaven. We seem to get excited and shout and rejoice about going to heaven. We spend more time talking about heaven than we do thinking about earth. God put us here for more than that. More than to stand around watching, waiting, and looking, and doing little else. It's the same thing that happened here in the text. The event of the story is it's, it's, it's post-resurrection. The resurrection has happened, and Jesus has been around for some 40 days after he has been resurrected. And now he's getting ready to go back up to heaven. And the word of the Lord declares that as he goes up, the ones that he's been talking to were gazing, looking up. That's what it says in verse 10 into heaven. They were gazing, they were caught looking up into heaven. And the Lord revealed to me that one of the things that's wrong with the church is that ever since that day, that that is what we have been perfecting, standing around, looking up into heaven, waiting to go and be with Jesus, looking for Jesus to return, but doing little else in the meantime. We want to be ready when Jesus comes, but what are you doing until then? And ever since that day of the ascension of our Lord, all we've been concentrating on is gazing instead of going. But the word tells us today that Jesus left us here for a reason and a purpose. And, and, and all we appear to concentrate upon is getting caught up 
in the heaven to be with the Lord in our mansion, in the streets paved with gold, where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. But the problem is that we are so focused, fixated, and caught up in gazing at heaven and waiting that we're not paying any attention to the hell being raised on earth. Doing nothing while we wait. You know, I ain't trying to put nobody anywhere, but at some point in time, all of you go to the doctor. I hope. And you know how it is when you're in the waiting room. That's when they got all the magazines there. That's when they got the little pamphlets because you're sitting around waiting. You don't have nothing to do. So I, I, I have a habit. I always have something with me to do. I'm going to send some emails. I'm going to do some texts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some. I'm going to bring something with me because I don't like sitting around doing nothing. Just waiting. Wasting time. And I believe some of us are sitting in our waiting rooms for Jesus right now. You've been sitting there for ever since you got saved. Waiting for Jesus to call your name or your number. I believe one of the reasons that everything seems to be going to hell in a handbasket is because the church is too busy gazing and waiting instead of witnessing, not going, not doing anything. It says the word gazing means gawking, looking intently, staring, watching. You know, when have you ever been around somebody that just looked like they're staring off into? I do that every now and then. It drives Reverend crazy. Because he'll be like looking at me. He said, what are you looking at? I said, I'm not looking at anything. I'm letting my brain rest. But sometimes we just stand around and we just be watching, staring, not doing anything. And because of that, that's the reason drugs are taking over our street corner. It's because we're too busy gazing, watching. It's the reason there's violence in our streets and, and our schools are, are deteriorating while our home structure is falling apart more than ever is because the church is so busy gazing. It's the reason the rich get richer and the poor get poorer is because we're too busy gazing. We come to church to sing and shout and declare that we are on our way to heaven. But then we leave and drive by people who are homeless. We walk by persons who can't find jobs. We rush past teenagers who are getting high and cutting on the corner because we're so busy gazing, but we ain't doing nothing. But I've come to declare a word today that when what Jesus said to the people in that day, he called us not to be gazers. He called us to be witnesses. He, he has not called us solely to shout about going to heaven. He's called us to go into the world and tell everybody that there is a savior who can save us from our sins. You and I are not called to gaze. We're called to testify and give witness. To testify means to show, to confirm, to live out, to bear out, to demonstrate, to exemplify, to give as evidence. It means to give confirmation, out of conf affirmation, substantation, verifiable proof and logical support. To testify is about your life and your lips. It's about your words and your works. It's about your worship and your witness. David put it this way. The redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. The word say so in the Hebrew is amar, which means to tell, make known, make public, to advertise, to publish, to broadcast, to get it out. If you are the redeemed of the Lord, somebody should be hearing something from you. The problem is that most of us within the body of Christ are so enamored and narcissistic. Yeah, y'all look up that word on your own. And caught up in ourselves and our comfort and our convenience that we don't get it out and witness. 
We refuse to even volunteer to help others. I ain't gonna call nobody out, but we have a food pantry every Thursday and, and twice a month on Saturday. And some folks had not even shown up yet to say, can I help put a box in a car? Can I help greet somebody? The same ones every week show up to minister through that ministry. Some won't even share information. Send out texts with posts and flyers and no one, some folks don't even read them. Like, Pastor, I didn't, I didn't even read that text. Won't share information. Don't read it themselves. But we want someone to know we're a witness. In testimony. We're a witness, but we can't sacrifice no time. We're a witness, but we can't give up our conveniences. We're a witness, but we ain't willing to move out of our comfort zone. We're a witness, but we're not willing to come down and be a servant. We're a witness, but I can't practice no humility. We're a witness because hmm, I just said I was a witness. But I stopped by to let you know that you are all sinners saved by the grace of God. And you've been saved for his good works. And, and I know y'all, I know Mount Zion is not a church that runs all up and down the aisles and shouts and dance and dips and does the electric slide and all that kind of stuff because we're holy. We're churchgoers and not witnesses. Sometimes you need to get out there and do the electric slide so somebody can see the Christ in you and say, you know what? She, she might can tell me something. But we sit back on our high horse. Mm-hmm. And we refuse to practice humility. We refuse to go among the ones that we need to be witnessing to and sharing the word with. Jesus said, you will get power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness. Some of us not witnessing because we ain't got no power. The Holy Spirit hadn't shown up in our lives even yet. The very idea of a witness stems from the word martyrs, which is where we get our word martyr. Stephen in the Bible was a martyr. He gave up his life, not willingly, but he gave it. And what do we, what does that mean for us today? It means we have come as a servant, not as a celebrity. It means we've come saying, just as I am without one plea. It means we're traveling to the cross expecting that we're going to bleed on the way. It means we live on the altar and not on our high horse. It means that our chief aim and purpose and desire is to please the one who is our king of kings and lords of lords. Because that is what it means to be a witness for Jesus Christ. And I just came by to let you know in case you didn't know, he didn't call you to be an AME. He called you to be a witness. He didn't even call me to be a preacher. He called me to be a witness. He didn't call you to be an usher. He called you to be a witness. He didn't call you to be a steward. He called you to be a witness. He didn't call nobody to be no trustee. He called you to be a witness. He didn't call you to gossip. He called you to witness. He didn't call you to criticize and critique. He called you to witness. He didn't call you to just be holy. He called you to be a witness. And he said, I'm giving you power so that you can be a witness to those around you. It's very interesting that when the disciples started to talk to him, I believe in verse 6, they said to him, now, Jesus, we, we want to know. We got a question. When are you going to restore the kingdom? See, in their Judaic mindset, they were thinking about political power and position. And so many times in the church, we get caught up in position and power, name calling, name dropping. And, and Jesus said to them, wait a minute, that's y'all problem. 
You are more worried about position than you are about power. See, because you, you got confused with the fact that to understand you can have position and not have any power. You can have a title and no authority. But when you have power, God can move you to a place where you don't need position. How many of you have ever been a place where you didn't have the position, but you knew you had the power? Uh-huh. It could be on your job. Somebody else got the position, but when somebody want to know something, they come to you because you got the power. Uh-huh. They may be the manager, but when they need to know what's going on, they come to you because you don't have the position, but you got the power. When something's not going right, they don't go talk to HR. They come and say, can you handle it? Can you help me? Because you may not have the position, but you got the power. You may not have the title, but you have the character. You may not even have your name on the wall, but you have the anointing on your life. Uh, every now and then, I, I ask the Lord to deliver me from people who desire position, but aren't in line in tune with the character and ways of God to where they possess the power. They caught up in the title. Make sure it's listed. Make sure it's right. But I stopped by to let you know that after all, anybody can shout in the spotlight. Anybody can smile when your name is on the program. Anybody can rejoice when everybody knows it was you. Anybody can celebrate when you have a following crowd and a bank account that's full and complete. But character is developed when you have to rejoice when you're at the back of the line. Character is developed when you can shout and testify when your name is never called brother so-and-so. When you can shout and testify that your name is never called chairperson. When you can shout and testify because your name is never called soloist. You can st uh, shout and testify because your name is never called steward. <laughs> you can testify and shout because your name is never called tiger. You can smile because you know you made the contribution. You can smile knowing you were deliberately overlooked and ignored, but you showed up anyway. You didn't say because they didn't call my name, I ain't going. Because they didn't put my name down or ask me, I'm not going to support it or participate. But you show up anyway. I asked the Lord to deliver me from overly sensitive, self-centered, bougieistic believers who want position and no power. I have low tolerance. Oh, pastor forgot my name. I ain't coming to church. Pastor didn't say my name. I ain't going to give. Pastor asked somebody to do something for 50 years and you stopped really doing it well 25 years ago. I'm going to stop going and I'm going to try to encourage everybody else to not go. Self-centered. Oh, I'm, I give the most money, so therefore I should have the most uh, highest position. Bougieistic believers who want position but ain't got no power. Real power is more than just a casual fling that you have with God during the week. But real power is when you've been in the word to the extent that the word is in you. Real power is more than telling somebody where you go to church. But real power is the outpouring and the overflow of joy unspeakable that let others in your proximity smell the aroma of your relationship with the Most High God. And it is that power that causes you to celebrate, to rejoice and testify about how good the Lord has been to you. I'm talking about real power. Because when you have real power, others around you can keep the position <laughs> because when you walk in the ways of God, he will give you power to walk right.
When you walk in the ways of God, he will give you power to talk right. When you walk in the ways of God, he will give you power to live right. When you walk in the ways of God, he will give you power to love right. And that should be your testimony. I don't have the position, but I got the power. <laughs> because he said in verse 8, I'm giving you power to be a witness. Now, let me tell you quickly. You can't be a witness and be a hater. You can't be a witness for the Lord and be a gossiper. You can't be a witness for the Lord and be jealous. You can't be a witness for the Lord and be envious. You can't be a witness for the Lord and be hateful. Because if you're called to be a witness, but you don't act like a witness, you don't have the character of the witness, uh, 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 you will force Jesus to treat you like a hostile witness. And the one thing I don't want for Jesus to do is to ever treat me like a hostile witness. Because when Jesus does that, he will break you until you get the point. I don't know about you, but is there anybody in here can testify that Jesus had to break you because you wasn't acting like the person you were called to be? Jesus had to break some stuff. He had to slap you around. He had to put some pain in your life. He had to take people out of your life. He may have had to rearrange some stuff in your life because you wasn't doing what he called you to do. I stopped by today. Don't make Jesus treat you like a hostile witness because you decided to resist your testimony, because you decided to deny your witness with your character and your spirit and your bitter ways of contempt, envy, hatred, and jealousy. What is a witness? A witness is somebody who's been called to testify because they have evidence of a truth that they didn't learn by somebody telling them, but they learn by experience. They know from firsthand knowledge, it's not hearsay what you witnessing to. It's not hearsay what you testifying to. You've been called and commissioned and deputized to be a witness for the Lord. Do you know you just missed your shout? Because understand, you can't be a witness until you have something to witness about. This is the reason I can go on the witness stand for Jesus Christ. Because I got some tangible, verifiable, undeniable evidence that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than I ever asked for or expected. Is there any witnesses in the house? Is there anybody witness to testify? If so, will you raise your right hand so I can deputize you in the name of the Lord? Do you promise to tell the truth? So help you God. Will you say I do? Do you promise to tell somebody how he healed you? I do. Do you promise to tell him how he paid your bills? I do. Do you promise to tell somebody how he dried your tears in the midnight hour? I do. Do you promise to tell how he fought your battles? I do. Do you promise to tell how he opened doors for you? I do. Do you promise to tell how he made your enemies your footstool? I do. It's my season. It's your season to be a witness for God. I came into this year saying this is our season. God is waiting to bless you in this season. God wants to bless you so much that the devil is going to be scared to cross-examine you. See, cross-examination is defined as a close questioning of a hostile witness in a court of law to discredit or throw new light on the testimony already provided in direct examination. You just went through the direct examination. But know that the devil is going to try to cross-examine you. The devil is going to try to question you. He's going to try to question your faith. He's going to try to question 
the goodness of God in your life. But I stop by to let you know there's only one way to be a witness. Verse 8 said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. See, you don't get power until you get the Holy Ghost down in your soul. I need somebody to know about the power of the Holy Ghost today. He said, you shall receive power. That means that the power that you get, you can't earn it. It doesn't matter how much you come to church. It don't matter how many crosses you got hanging around your neck. The reception of the Holy Spirit is a gift from God for you to have power. It doesn't say to make you shout. It doesn't say to make you speak in tongues. It didn't come to make you run all over the place. It didn't come to make you fall out at the altar. It says, but the Holy Ghost came to give you power to be witness to the glory and honor of the kingdom of God. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, Greek comes upon you is the same word that Gabriel used when he talked to Mary and told her she was pregnant with Jesus. See, the Holy Spirit can't be taught to you. You can't go take no class and get the power. Come upon you means that you place yourself in a subservient position to submit to the impregnation of the Holy Ghost to make you pregnant with power to give birth to a witness that you could not do without the power coming on you. It's not a feeling, F-I-L-L-I-N-G, or baptism as we call it. Now, you will feel when you confess, but this coming upon you is a visitation that will effectively give you power to work in God's kingdom. See, I'm already filled with the Holy Spirit because I'm feeding on the word. I come to Bible study. I, I do my part, but every now and then I need the Holy Ghost to visit me. Is there anybody here can declare, Pastor, I know I'm filled, but every now and then when somebody get on my nerves, my last nerve, I need a visitation of the Holy Spirit. Uh, 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 Pastor, I know I'm filled, but when I start having thoughts of depression, I need a visitation of the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, Pastor, I know I'm filled, but when I feel like giving up, I need a visitation of the Holy Ghost. Because he says, you're going to get power to do some stuff. You're going to get power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. When the Holy Ghost visits you. He said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was where they were. That was their home. He said, and then you can go and be his witnesses. And and, and the reason that you're going to need power beyond your power is that the first place that you're going to need to change some stuff is the area closest to you, your Jerusalem. It's hard to change what's close to you. He says the first place you got to change is your home space. He, he, He says, I'm not talking about your zip code and your address. I'm talking about the people in your family. You got a witness to them. How many done witness to some folks in their family? How many people done prayed, done told them, admonished them, corrected them? You got to talk to the people first in your family. You got to witness to them. And then you got to witness to the people in your circle of friends. He said, I need to give you power to change some stuff in Jerusalem, some stuff with the people you hanging out with. Uh, I I come by to let you know that some of you can't get free because some of the people you hanging out with don't mean you no good. They don't mean the kingdom any good. So he put you there to witness to them, not to partner in their mess. He said, you will be a witness in your home first. 
but then also Judea. See, Judea are those people you're familiar with, but they're not necessarily your family. Judea is your neighbors. Judea is your coworkers. And yes, Judea is even some of your church members. You need power to keep your witness on a job full of hell raisers. You need power to keep your witness around church folks who act more hellified than saved. You need to keep the power to be a witness in areas you're not familiar with. But then you're going to need power because he says, I'm going to take you into enemy territory. Samaria. Street corners. Schools. Places and spaces where people you don't know or even like or even know God. He said, I'm going to give you power over enemies who tried to shut you up but couldn't do anything to back you up. How many of you have some enemies that keep trying to shut you up? But you keep on smiling. You keep on rejoicing. You keep on praying for him because you have the power of the Holy Ghost. How many of you can witness that the more the enemy tries to shut you up and tear you down, the more power Jesus gives you? Why? Because he said, I will prepare a table for you before you in the presence of your enemies. I need somebody here today to know how to go in the enemy territory with a smile on your face and declare that you are more than a conqueror because you've got the power of the Holy Ghost. And he'll, he, he, I'm getting ready to go to my final, my final word. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. These are all locations and levels. Mount Zion, it's our season. But if we're going to get to our season, if we're going to get the full blessings of this season, we got to be willing to be a witness in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. Why? Because these are levels and locations, levels of blessings, levels of impact. The order that Jesus speaks these towns and, and these places to means something. Jerusalem, Jesus said, that's the first thing. I, 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 in your home. Jerusalem is the first location, and, and I've been keeping you there. I've been keeping you in some areas because you have not completed some of the stuff I need you to complete. You hadn't witnessed to that family member. You hadn't talked to uh, Shaniqua. You hadn't talked to that knucklehead. You hadn't witnessed to them. And he said, I'm not going to let you go to the next location until you complete your job where you are. God says, I got some stuff for you to do on the job where you are. And, and, and you keep praying for deliverance, but I'm not going to move you yet. You, you keep wondering why I haven't let you out of that situation. Why I haven't let you out of that relationship. Why I even haven't let you out of maybe that marriage. Because I'm waiting on you to complete something. But God said, then when you do that, then comes Judea and Samaria. God says, when he finishes working with you at home, he will start blessing you in areas you don't deserve. That's God's grace and favor will come upon you when you are his witnesses. When he gets through blessing you with stuff you ought to have, he's going to start blessing with you with stuff you never thought you would have. How many of you know that you have blessings you never thought you would have. In the uttermost parts of the earth, that's what he said. And why do you say this, Jesus? Because I got places I want to take them yes, to. Please. Tell them I got places that are too innumerable to be numbered. I got more in store for them than they can even think about. But the only way for me to describe everything I got left for them is the uttermost parts of the earth. God has more for you. God has more for you than what you already had behind you. Yes, Jesus. There's more left to get yes, Lord. than there is left to receive. Yes, there is. God's got more before you 
than what you have behind you. Your dreams are greater than your memories. Your future is brighter than your past. God's got a blessing that you haven't even thought about. Somebody ought to look at their neighbor and say, oh, magnify, oh, magnify. the Lord with me. Lord. Let me testify about the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. I got power to be blessed. Yeah. <laughs> I got power to walk right. I got power to give witness. And you got power to save somebody. You even got power to heal somebody. The disciples tried to heal somebody. And they went back to Jesus and questioned why they were not able to do it. And he told them, oh, ye of little faith, this does not come but by fasting and the power of the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody in here who know you got the evidence? You can testify that he's been your Jehovah Nisi. Oh, he's been your Jehovah Rapha. He's been the healer. He's been your Jehovah Shalom. He's been your Prince of Peace. I'm a witness that he can exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask. I challenge you to go home and be a witness. Go to work and be a witness. Come to church and be a witness. Go to your enemies and be a witness. Go to our youth and be a witness. Testify in the grocery store. Testify on the mall. Testify on the street corner. Be a witness. Instead of just looking for God to return, instead of just watching and waiting, do something in the meantime. Be a witness. Be a witness while you're waiting. Be a witness while you're watching. Be a witness while you're looking. Do you know him? Have you tried him? I can testify that since Jesus came into my life, oh, my life has never been the same. Oh, what changes have been wrought. The floods of joy, oh, my soul. Let the sea billows roll. I'm a witness for the Lord. I'm not watching. I'm not waiting. I'm telling somebody that God can do it. God is able. He's done it before. He saved me when I didn't even know I needed to be saved because somebody testified to me. Somebody witnessed to me. Somebody didn't pass me by and just look, murmur, talk, gossip, text. They stopped and told me, you are a child of the Most High God. You should be not less, but you can be more. You should not be least, but you can be the most likely. We are in the shape we're in because we got so many folks standing around looking up in the sky for Jesus to come back. I want to be ready when he comes. But you ain't doing nothing to get ready. You don't need another suit from Josh Bank. You don't need another pair of Michael, uh, whatever his name is, Coors, shoes. You don't need that fancy car. But you need to be a witness for the Lord. See, it's okay to have that stuff. I like nice stuff. But I understand that it ain't by my power. It's not by my might. It's not because of anything I've done. Even when that money show up in my bank account. I know with Prince cometh my help. Uh, yeah. And my help come from the Lord. My blessings come from God. Oh, it may say ABC Company on the stub. But I know God wrote the check. Right. <laughs> God signed his name. 
we got to understand that we got to witness to somebody. There are people suffering. And we can't even witness right here at 6045. We can't even tell nobody at 6045. We ain't invited nobody to church. Oh my God. We, well, I ain't invite them because I don't like the way pastor preach. You may not like the way I preach, but they may just love it. That's right. I don't like the way the choir sang. You may not like it, but they might love it. Have you told anybody? about Jesus? My God, Jesus? Have you witnessed to anybody? See, the reason we walking around, and I'm not going to get into next week's sermon, about a scared church. The reason we are a scared church is because we're weak. We don't have power. The Holy Ghost ain't doing nothing because it has not come upon us. And until you get the Holy Ghost, until you humble yourself and let the Spirit fall fresh on you, you will not be his witness. Not at home, not in Jerusalem. You won't be his witness, not in your schools, not in Judea. You won't be, and you definitely ain't going to Samaria. So understand, stop standing around looking and begin to work and witness for God. Amen. Oh, I've got it, y'all. I've got it. The Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost power. Oh, do you need it? Do you have it? Do you need it? The Holy Ghost power. I challenge you to get it. Oh, I want it. See, you can't go to the store and buy it. Amazon ain't going to deliver it to your door. You can't do curbside pickup. You can't do it through the drive through You got to get down on your knees. Stay there, stay there. Do the Holy Ghost If you don't have it, stand to your feet. We're getting ready to go. Come on, come on. And to your feet. Is there anyone here today that needs the Holy Ghost power? You know, we don't offer membership here at Mount Zion. We offer a relationship. There may be someone today that said, you know what? I got some folks I need to witness to. And I've been scared. I, 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 I know I need to say something, but I just... I'm scared. I'm fearful. Come on and get it. The Holy Ghost. I invite you to come and get it. And then you'll say what you need to say. And people will respect you for it. Yeah, at first they might look at you funny. But then your character will reflect your witness. Even before I got my grandkids, I kept on saying, I'm going to find a church home. And I kept on passing by this church and kept on passing by the church. But when I see the summer camp for the kids, because my kids go up here to new beginnings, I something switched them. It's like the Holy Spirit was talking to me and said, you need to switch them. So 
I hadn't talked. He go there, and my other son go to church elementary. And the, the spirit just talked to me because I have the spirit of discernment. And I came, and I talked to Liv like I never just like to know her all my life. And I just hit it off with her. I said, I'm coming to church Sunday. She said, you sure? I said, I'm coming to church Sunday. I was running a lot. Let me tell you, the devil tried to stop me today for getting y'all. But I said, I'm coming. Keys. I'm like, where my keys there? Try to find something to put on. I just, I'm throwing everything. I'm going with it. I said, y'all, come on. Okay. Where mama, why we got to go to church? That's all we going to. I came to this church. I've been looking at three months. And I never would stop. But when I talked to Leah, I said, Leah, I'm going to come to the church. I miss the kids singing, but that's okay. I, I eventually get a chance to hear them sing. It seemed like my macaroni and cheese, my cornbread wasn't good fast enough. I just turned the oven off. I said, I start back up my Sunday church. But I'm glad I came. Amen. 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 We're so glad you came too. And see how God just does things when we witness and testify. And I love the fact that our ministry with children is a witness that draws people to Christ. Consider yourself at home and make yourself at home. My sister. Amen. Amen. Sister Linda, make sure you get her information. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, Finance Committee. I've got it. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. I need it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to ask you to take your envelopes out and we're going to pray over them even before you bring them. Then once you have deposited them, we ask you to return to your seats and I will give a benediction and we will be on our way. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask you to take our gifts this morning and use them in your kingdom, God. God, we thank you for what you blessed us with, whether little or a lot. We know it all comes from you. So now, God, we give back that you may bless us again. Receive these, our sacrificial offerings and our tithes and our benevolence and those gifts that you have ordered us and ordained us according to your scripture to give. Bless the giver and the gift. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would stand, come from the rear to the center. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to worship together, God. God, allow us to be emboldened with your Holy Spirit, God. Let the Holy Ghost fall on us so that we will receive the power to become your witnesses, God. You created us to go into all the earth to witness to others, God, that you save 
you deliver, you set free. So let us tell somebody about you, God. Let us testify to your goodness. Now, God, unto him that is able to present us faultless before your throne, be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore, in the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. Be blessed this week, and may the power of God go with you. And I'll see you Wednesday in Bible study. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Jesus in me.